y'all i don't know if i've ever been as excited as i am to have the conversation that i'm having today and it is not by myself i have one of my nearest dearest bestest friends on the entire planet on here to talk about something that we need to talk about more which is the fourth trimester um, that is often the forgotten trimester. And in addition to that, we're going to talk about this amazing book that she has put out with her daughter that I do believe is going to help influence so many conversations in so many households and help to impact so many women in so many amazing ways. Y'all, I'm ready to get into this thing. Let's talk about it. This is Looking for My Fit. Looking for my fit, looking for my fit, yeah. Looking for my feet, looking for my feet, yeah. Looking for my feet, looking for my feet, yeah. Looking for my feet, looking for my feet, yeah. What's up, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Looking for My Fit podcast. My name is Jamaica, and I'm so, so, so excited to have you all here. But y'all, I'm even more excited because I have one of my best friends in the world here on this podcast. Um, I'm not just going to pull you on. I need to give you a proper introduction. <laughs> <Y'all>, <laughs> she, she has to be introduced properly. But I also need y'all to know who I roll with. You don't, you don't want to fool with me. You know what I'm saying? This shouldn't me being child of the king. I have a friend who is in the FBI. You don't want none of this. Okay. So in addition to being an amazing friend and a mother and now an author, what, what don't you do, Lee? Without further ado, let me just go ahead and bring her on here. Y'all, welcome to the podcast, my homegirl, Lily jones Thank you so much for having me, girl. That you was such so an amazing welcome. introduction. Thank you. Oh, you're so welcome, Lee. I love you. Also, I love let you. me say that she's a, a graduate of Howard University. Thank um, you. Yeah, I say stand up. I, I just want everybody to know all the things that you've done. Okay. <laughs> I, I just need everybody to know she has credentials, y'all. This is my girl. <laughs> Um, but Lee, seriously, I'm so happy to have you here. Well, I'm so glad to be here, girl. Thank you so much. And let me tell you something right now before we get started on me. I'm so <laughs> proud of you. You oh, hear me? Looking for my fit. Meek, you have been leading us, leading me personally for the last several years and trying to, to be what God has called me to be and be comfortable in my skin right where I am. And you have always been the, the brightest light and the most confident, and you've always been pulling the rest of us along and turning the light around on the rest of us. I'm proud of you. Oh, thank I'm you. Proud of you. you are that amazing, means, girl. That means a lot coming that from you, and amazing. I love you so much. I love you. So uh, this is what I need people to know. Lee, the, so first of all, Lily is a twin. Shout out to Cece. Yes, Cece that's and Lily. That's my girl. <laughs> yeah, um, and the craziness is, uh, th- that I had best friends who were twins, and then I ended up being the one who had the twins. That's right. You sure did. <laughs> I was like, how did this happen? I got I had the friends who were twins, and I ended up being the one with the twins. That's right. That's um, right. but we have been friends, Lee. I was thinking about this. I met y'all now. C and Lee are one year behind me, so I'm born April '79. Y'all born January of '80. That's right. But I met y'all when I was five, mm-hmm. and I am 44 now so we've been friends almost 40 years absolutely and i promise you girl look we might have met i don't know we might have been conscious of meeting when you were five but yeah you're not telling me that we weren't babies in ebenezer together (laughs) (laughs) i believe we were (laughs) ebenezer cme church we were babies over there together you know what (laughs) you are so right because our parents knew each other that's right and so we remember meeting. I remember meeting you at Patricia School of Dance. Okay. And we had on a little white tutus. That's right. Like that's my first recollection mm-hmm. of meeting y'all. Mm-hmm. Uh, but talk about a friendship that stood the test of time. Yes, girl. girl yeah. We are, we are riders, Meek. Honey. We are <laughs> riders. We've been through it together. You know, we really have. And I'm, are we going to get into everything in a second, y'all? But I just have to say, like, you have to have an appreciation for a friendship where when you need something and you call each other there are no disclaimers you know we we just jump right in you know not with no and and we don't we can go sometimes we can talk every week sometimes we talk once a month sometimes might be several months but whenever we do talk 
we just jump right back in like we haven't missed a beat and i never have to call you or you call me and say now listen give me your word you won't say anything or can i we just dive straight in it's automatic it's automatic like i know that i'm in a safe space when we're talking and i you know i appreciate and i have so much gratitude for that me too mate me too. And you know what I love about our friendship? I love that we are, the, I think, I believe one of the true measures of friendship is low maintenance. Mm-hmm. Right? Like it's not one of the, the, these things where girl, she ain't called me in, in three months. Well, I haven't heard. She didn't text me, blah, blah, blah. I haven't heard. Listen, it's one of those things where we have an appreciation for who we are and where we are in life. And when we talk, we pick right back up and there's no, expectation there's not, nothing to maintain we just are i appreciate that about your friendship girl same and I, that i think that's really what has helped us to maintain because we just know like life lives life lives girl yeah and it's not personal yeah. that's right yeah so like you said when we, when we can find the time to get together or hop on a call or see each other then we do but not talking to each other doesn't mean that any love has been lost we just you know we we know I know if I need something, I can hit y'all up. And if y'all can make it happen, y'all will, and vice versa. That's right. It's done. Yeah. So speaking of that, um, we hadn't seen each other in a while in person. So we talk. And girl, our, our text and stuff was so random. I mean, when I tell you we send each other the <laughs> most random texts at the most random times. So th- we hadn't seen each other in a while, even though we've been talking, but mm-hmm. y'all, okay. Now, this is me and Lee, so it feels like girlfriends catching up. So I apologize if I haven't given you the full background. But Lily is running an empire, okay? <laughs> that me. Lily is over there running an empire. So Lily, okay, in addition to the things that I that I ran down for you, you know, she's an F- FBI agent um, living in the D.C. area. Uh, you are an author, you are you a president? I know you and Jack and Jill. I mean, like Lily has all the things going. She is a <laughs> wife and she is a mom mm-hmm. of three beautiful, um, accomplished children, honey. You over there raising them babies. You hear me? Girl, thank you. I'm trying, like just like you trying, girl, out here striving, just like you. Yes. So she has two boys and she has a daughter. Mm-hmm. And her daughter's name is True. Uh, first of all, I always love your children's names too. So she has Noah, Justice, and True. Mm-hmm. And you started uh, a company that has like souffles and oils um, called True Eden Beauty. Mm-hmm. And it's based off of your daughter's name. Um, so she already running this and y'all the souffles, the oils, everything. Phenomenal. <laughs> we had the soup. Well, Jordan doesn't even, my my child doesn't even let me keep the, keep the stuff because <laughs> she, she takes it and, and runs with it. And then Peyton has the oil that she uses for her hair. So great products. And we can talk about those more, but over Christmas, you went back to our hometown mm-hmm. and you all had set up at um, a local coffee shop. Mm-hmm. So when I knew you all were going to be there, I was like, let me get down here and see my girls. Yeah, good. girls, I'm glad to see you. <laughs> so I go down there to see. And so, you know, we sit down and we talk and then you're like, girl, I'm writing a book. And I was like, what? And you were like, come over here and sit at the table. I'm going to show you the book. <laughs> I'm like Lord, we, I mean, like you were like, I'm in this thing, and Lily, that book, sitting at that table, listening to you read that book, I literally had tears mm-hmm. in my eyes because mm-hmm. it resonated with me, um, on a personal level, as a mother, and so I just want you to tell me, like, how did this book? So the book that she has written is called um, "Be True to You." yes and girl oh my gosh the illustrations for this book y'all oh they are gorgeous I mean when I tell you everything came together for this book everything came together for the book um but I just want you to tell so it's called be true to you and it is a book that you collaborated with your daughter true that's right to write and so I'm just going to sit back and just let you share how this concept for the book came about Amazing, uh, Meek. I tell you, you mentioned it. You talked about the fact that True Eden Beauty was established, right? I'll tell you how that started. Um, True came to me when she was nine, right before her ninth birthday. And she said, Mommy, I want to make a business out of the handmade 
uh, organic skincare, hair care products we've been making in the house together for years, right? Um, and so, you know, I thought there was going to be a fleeting thought for her. I was like, oh, okay, true. But we got closer to her birthday and she was really serious. Um, and so we made up a bunch of product. We got a, a cheap little website going um, for a ninth birthday. We had a birthday party. We invited the mayor and we had a ribbon cut in right here at the house for True Eden Beauty. Not really knowing how far she was trying to take it, but really just wanted to honor what it is that she said she was trying to do. Um, my kids have been in, you know, summer camps and stuff for financial literacy and entrepreneurship and things like that. So I wanted to give her a tool to utilize um, those skills and develop because she asked. So we did that, not really knowing, you know, kind of how far she wanted to take it. The It launched in August of 2021 and has just taken off. And we have had so much support. So I have to mention the business before I mention a book because the motto of the business is be true to you, okay? So the motto of the business, we sat down with the kids when we established the business, core values, mission, vision, and motto. Motto is be true to you to play on True's name. Um, about a year after we started the business, I was in my office one Saturday and nothing in the world special about this Saturday. Um, one of those rare Saturdays actually that I got a chance to be in the house. And I sat down and I was just kind of inspired me. Can you probably remember when we were young? Um, I would I was kind of a random writer. I did poetry and uh, wrote songs and things like that when we were growing up. Um, and so I was kind of inspired that day to write a message to her, just a note, just to kind of talk about what does be true to you mean? And the fact that I wanted it to to kind of develop in her life as a meaningful way of being and expressing her authentic self. And so I started to write this note and it started to rhyme. And I tell you, just like I think, you know, how God just inspires things. I didn't sit down to write a poem, just like I didn't sit down to write a book. But it started out, this note said, little girl with a smile that inspires. Do you know when you open your mouth, you breathe fire? Little girl with mountains to climb, you'll conquer each hill with your brilliant mind. Sweet girl, you dance on the clouds, too strong and too brave to follow the crowd. Live your best life and live it out loud, and mommy will be there happy and proud. Little girl with the light in your eyes, you are the prize, girl, you are the prize. And it goes on and on. Um, as I got to the end of my note, she comes bouncing in the office. And I said, true, I said, I wrote you a little note. I want to read it to you, see what you think about it. And I read it to her and true, you know, she was gracious about it, but she wasn't overly impressed. And she sat next to me and she picked up a pen and a piece of paper and she started to write me back. And when she wrote me back, the first thing true said, I'm going to show y'all. It rocked my whole world. She said, I was born of a girl so brave and so strong, but sometimes it feels like something is wrong. You're so accomplished at work, you're a boss, but you have to make sure that you don't get lost. She says, sometimes you seem sad, it makes me feel bad. Sometimes you've given much more than you've had. Mom, I can see it, you're doing your best. Mom, you're my hero, but heroes need rest. And she goes on and on and on, and she basically tells me towards the end um, of her note, she says, um, you're wonderfully, perfectly, wickedly smart. Are you still determined to follow your heart? If you don't believe you're amazing, I do. I'll be a great me if you'll be a great you. I'll hear what you say, but I'll do what you do. So always, always be true to you. And I'm going to tell you something right now. That thing put me on my knees. It put me on my knees. And I, and I promise you that I read those lines 20 times. And I'm gonna tell you, when she finished writing, she didn't tear it, she bounced on out that office. <laughs> she had come, she had done what she came in there to do. And I believe God used her as a vessel to say to me that I wasn't necessarily practicing what I'm preaching. Mm -hmm. And all this energy that I'm putting into her best life, she's looking at me like, what about your best life? And when she said, I hear what you say, but I'll do what you do. 
to always, always be true to you. I promise you, I read that thing 20 times and I cried and, and, and I doubled over and cried and I was just a puddle. I was just a mess. I just broke down in a way, in a way that I just very rarely break, allow myself to break down. Um, and then I called CC and then I called my mom and I called my cousin and, I, and my aunt and I read that to them and everybody cried. And I could tell by the reaction that this was a message, just like you said when you read it in that coffee shop that day. I could tell by the reaction that this was a message that was for me, but it was for more. It was for all of us. Yes. And I promise you that I didn't sit down that day and have never ambitioned to write a book, never thought about being an author. Always was a poet, always was a songwriter, but never considered myself an author excuse me, and definitely never endeavored to write something that would be illustrated, right? I'm, I'm slow to say this, that it's a children's book because though it's illustrated, the message is for every woman, every big one, every little one, every woman in the workplace, every woman at home, it is for every woman. Towards the end, what I realized after True wrote her part of the note, God really just inspired me to turn it to the audience because at that point I knew that it wasn't mine. It was for all of us. It wasn't truths. It was for all of us. And so God gave me brave little girls and brave mamas too. If you're reading this book, we're talking to you. We love your ambition. We think you're a star. We love your resilience. We love who you are. We know you're out there saving the world, but we hope you remember you must save the girl, the girl who's inside you. She is enough. That girl must survive through all of this stuff. Nothing's worth more than the light in your eyes. You are the prize, girl. You are the prize. Right. And then it goes on in a few more pages and it ends. Um, I know that it's not a children's book, but the but certainly God gave it to me and true that day. And then God gave me the vision to have it illustrated. At that point, I think I thought it was a children's book. Um, but when I got the, the final copy and when I sat down with a, a group of my, um, my good friends and, and line sisters, they said, oh, no, honey, this is not a children's book. And so the way that, you know, folks have reacted lets me know that this is a, a message that God needs for us, you and me, like right here in the, in the middle of our lives, raising these girls who are watching us, watching how we cope, watching how we don't cope, watch, watching how we care for ourselves or watching how we don't. Right? Yeah, girl. Yeah, they're watching all the toxicity. They're watching all the stress go down. They're watching all the overwhelm. And the question is, what do we want from them for them? Because whatever we want for them, we better get for us first. Lee, girl, first of all, you hit it on the head. It's it's not a children's book, mm -hmm. or I would say it's not just a children's book. Mm -hmm. This is for, and we can even go outside of motherhood, you know, right. and just how we're taking care of ourselves this book i'm gonna tell you and let me tell you what's so funny so y'all know I, I was able to get an advanced copy <laughs> um and so when i was looking through and getting ready for you know for us to talk the very page that you went to is the page girl i'm gonna i have to reread this because it broke me down i'm gonna see i was like i said i wanted to read it but then i was like I don't know if I'm gonna be able to read it no, because it just gets me so it gets me so choked up when it's like also y'all I need to get me some glasses, but um it says you're so accomplished at work, you're a boss, but you have to make sure that you don't get lost. Yeah, yeah. You have to make sure that you don't get lost. And honey, listen, she read that thing from a place or wrote that thing from a place of knowing because she know her mama been lost in work. Yeah. She knows that I've been, you know, grinding from sunup to sundown. I go from one job to the next. I come home. That's another job. 
Yes. I, I run around with the kids. I'm still on my work phone. I'm still taking phone calls. I'm still dealing with emails. Um, she wrote that from a place of knowing, but you have to make sure that you don't get lost. And I'll tell you right now, I've been lost. I th- I th- and I think that's something that we can all, you know, most moms especially can relate to, mm-hmm. you know, in, and, and just going back to this page, girl, the, the second part is the part that broke me down because, you know, I think sometimes when we're in the grind and, and we're doing all of that, you think that you're doing it for your kids, yeah. but you don't realize the impact that it's having on them. Like we have to give them more credit That's right. for how they process it. So it's like, sometimes you seem, sometimes you seem sad and it makes me feel bad. Girl, woof, broke me down. So sometimes you gave us much more than you had. So sometimes you seem sad and it makes me feel bad. Sometimes you gave us much more than you had. Girl. Yeah. I literally read that and sat on my bed and cried. Mm-hmm. I sat on my bed and cried because I'm like, I think sometimes we think with all the grinding and all the going that you're you're doing that for them. But that won't be the thing that like they take with them. You know, like that's not the, you know, we have to realize like that has an impact. It so does. like if, if we're constantly grinding, if that is what they see, then it goes back to the point that you had at the, towards the end where it's like, I'll, I'll hear what you say, but I'll do what you do. That's right. And so even though I'm telling you one thing, they're literally in the house with you watching what you do. And there is a very strong chance that when they are grown and on their own, they're going to emulate that. That's it, Meg. And I'm going to tell you something. They're, they're watching what we do. But they're also absorbing that energy around what we're doing, right? And so they might not even realize that they're what they're seeing is stress. They may Ooh. not realize that what they're experiencing is anxiety. They might not be able to put a name to it. But they got a vibe. They got a spirit. They got a soul. They pick up the energy. And I'm going to tell you something. I think, Meek, you know, I know your mama and you know my mama. I know your grandma and you were familiar with mine. I think, you know, at some point we have to really address what has been pushed down in the woman's DNA in terms of the expectation of overwhelm. Our mamas worked hard. Our grandmas worked hard. Um, you know, I remember, and I think as the generations go, the work looks different. My grandma was in a field and I was three and four and five years old out there with her, right? Sun up, you know, barely the sun was up. Um, I don't know that we recognize that we have taken we have snowballed down the, through the generations. And my, so I may not be in the field. I'm, cl- I'm clearly in the workplace, in a government setting or in a corporate setting or whatever it may be. But my stress and my overwhelm is equivalent. And those women worked incredibly hard like we are now. It may have looked different but we are rolling this thing down through the generations and we have to stop it somewhere. It has to stop somewhere, Lee. And and that's the thing. So it's like, if we are mindful right now, we can be, you know, the one who breaks it. Yeah. So that they can do differently. But to your point, it's, it's, it's ingrained so heavy that we really have to be mindful and conscious to like push back. We do. And I'm, I'm going to tell you, I'm sitting on this podcast, honey, with, with, yeah, I can't tell you the problems, but I, I can't promise you that I know the answers. You know what I mean? I pray to God we can come up with that together. But I, <laughs> I don't have a solution. <laughs> I can't just diagnose the problem, but I don't know all the solutions. All I will tell you is at some point we have to decide that we want better for our girls. And I'm going to tell yeah. you, I don't need my daughter. I need my daughter to be strong enough, capable enough, independent enough. But I do not need my daughter to uh, exist in the same 
strong girl space that I have. Girl. I don't listen where, you know, the weight of the world. And Emma, tell you something. It's not just mothers. I really want to say this. Yeah. Like, be true to you. We're not just talking about mothers. No. Um, and if you notice in one of the illustrations closer to the back that I was reading from, you saw a, 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 a kind of a diversity of women, right? Four yeah. different women in different stages in life. You might be a mother, but you may not. But I'm going to tell you one thing about women. I believe all women are nurturing somebody. Yeah. Oh, Lee. I I really that. I'm sitting here now and I was thinking, you know, like, so when I started the podcast, I was talking about the fourth trimester, but child, honestly, I mean, cause that, that is the, you know, the, the one that we don't talk about, like the third one's over, we go in, but honestly, Lee, <clears throat> it is for that. This, this is what we're talking about. All women, like you said, even if you are not per se a, a, a mother, mm -hmm. you know, like you don't have children living in the home, you're nurturing somebody. somebody. You're nurturing you're, somebody. I have some friends, um, you know, who don't have children, I'll tell you, stay nurturing, pouring, giving, showing up all the time. All the time. Yeah. Caregiving, yeah. caregiving, right? And that's a huge word and it encompasses a lot. But 85% of women are care are the caregivers for elderly parents or someone in the family, right, who needs some support. That's while they go to work. So whether they have children or not they are mentoring someone mm -hmm. they are caregiving physically for someone they are tending to someone because just by nature um women are the nurturers of our society and yeah. so being true to you isn't just a message for moms C clearly it's the conversation between me and my daughter but it is all encompassing of of all women and girls in all walks of life. Yeah. It and you know, I think it 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 comes down again with us, like you said, like we don't have a solution. Um, but being willing to at least acknowledge mm -hmm. the space. So if we if we can at least say it, mm -hmm. then that's the starting point. Yes. So when I was growing up, of course, I had I was like surrounded by women with the exception of my dad, mm -hmm. women everywhere. My grandma, so on both sides, my grandma and each of my grandmas had a, had a rider with them, my mm -hmm. aunt. And they each had one who really, it felt like I had four grandmothers. Like my aunts had the title of aunt, but they were yep. like the grandmother. That's right. And I watched these women work. Yep. You hear me? I watched these women work and I watched my mom work. And, you know, and here's the thing. And I, th I this goes back to like, I think in our in our brains, and again, not just even for mothers, but women, there's a sense of feeling like you have to you have to sh prove, or you always have to be doing something, you know, in order for your worth to be acknowledged, or in order for not even for other people to acknowledge, but for yourself. Yes. Like I feel like I. If I'm sitting still, I'm being lazy. Right. You know, if I'm sitting still, I'm, I'm missing out on an opportunity. You know how people are, oh, why are you sleeping? I'm grinding. You know, people mm -hmm. have that whole thing. Mm -hmm. um, and just, you know, feeling like we have to work 10 times harder, you know. Right. And then when we finally do accomplish something, we don't even take the time to, like, enjoy it. Now we go into the grind of maintaining it. That's right. Now I need to keep it. That's you know, right. and so it's just like a constant cycle of going 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 that you get caught up in and then you spend it so fast you don't even know how to jump off no girl so, fast. yeah so i think about um growing up with my parents right my dad was pro take a break mm -hmm. and i would hear him say you know like hey you don't we don't have to do this right now but I think just part of what's ingrained in you, my mom's like, no, like, you know, Gail, Gail is, we going to get it. Yeah, we going to get it done. Get her done. Love you, look, love you, Gail. Love you, mama. I know you I are. Love, I love you, mama, Gail. <laughs> yeah, but that's just, you know, what she would do. And so for my dad, not in a, hey, I'm not going to do it. Papa Irvin is about self-care. And yeah. I, I always watched him do that. So he was like, going to take time to go hang out with his friends. And he would even take us with him mm -hmm. to go do that. 
my daddy had played in the basketball league all his life. I <laughs> lived at the armory watching my dad <laughs> play basketball in a basketball league. You know, even now, if he has the time to go play, he's going to go play. Like, and he believed like on the weekends, take a break, sit yeah. down. But yeah. I think just because of what we've seen, we don't even know how to really take a break and relax. I feel like at this point now, my mom is just getting to the point where she knows how to like slow down. Mm -hmm. But even if she comes to visit us, I have to make her sit down. Mom, mm -hmm. I've never cooked before. Like, yeah. it's, it's a, she, mom, put the, put the broom down. You know, mm -hmm. and now she'll cook for the kids. I will let her do that because her pancakes are amazing. So mm -hmm. I will let her have that little pass. But <laughs> outside of that, I have to be like, Mom, put stop. Why you, don't take nothing to this washing machine? We're good. I wash my clothes every other time you would. Back in Virginia, I don't need you to wash my clothes, but it's like that constant mm -hmm. thing of moving. And she's just getting to the point, maybe the last couple times they come down here, that I've really been able to get her to just sit still. Sit. Yeah. Just sit still. But as I'm preaching that to her, I'm having to teach it to myself. Right. So coming out, and you know, like I've just had a shift in careers <laughs> of lots of weeks. I've, I've done lots of shifting. Uh -huh. um, but coming out of that, real grind season that I was in um, and being in a season that is not right now very grindy mm -hmm. I'm having a hard time sitting still and I talked to one of my um, homegirls the other day and she was like it sounds like you feel like you've been benched you know what I mean so like you're sitting on the bench and the game is going and you're like put me in coach you know put me in and I feel like God has me in like this resting season and I'm struggling to rest I just feel like but I should be doing something but I should be doing more you know I'm girl I'm talking to myself like girl you got a degree in this and a degree in this and you're licensed in this and you're licensed in that and like find something in somewhere to go put this to use instead of just being like you know what thank you God for giving me an opportunity to sit still I, I'm struggling yeah to sit still yeah and so even though I'm smiling and people are like, oh, I'm like, yeah, I am. I'm relaxing. Like physically, you see me being more chill, mm -hmm. but immensely, like within me, it's a struggle. Yeah. Let me tell you something, mate. You know, I've been right there for so long. And I, you, you, you were mentioning and describing Mama Gail. Honey, that's Mama Sharon, too. My, my mom has been a slave driver all my life. You know, there was always something, one thing after the next. We were always productive. She was always productive. And I think what you learn in that kind of thing is you're doing good things. But I think you learn that your value is in what you do and how much you produce. And then that thing gets down, girl, gets down deep in our DNA. I read a book um, by a friend of mine, actually, Keisha Wilson. Um, she is a former FBI agent, wrote a book called The Power of Ease. And when I read that book, what I realized, she had diagnosed me well in those pages. I'm an exhaustaholic. It was the first time I had ever, um, you know, become acquainted with that term. But in the book, she describes the exhaustaholic. And that's what I think, you know, I've struggled with. Because just like you're talking about the, the ability to sit still, and feel comfortable, the ability to be still and still feel like you are worthy, the, the ability to sit still and do nothing, but not feel like you are nothing. Um, you know, that's a struggle, girl. It's been a struggle of my life. And it's one of the struggles of my life. And it's something that I don't want for my daughter. I want my daughter, girl, they got this term, the soft life. Whoop, they, girl. That's what the young folks are talking about in their child. Yes, Let's child. Go. Baby, look, I told my husband, take me to the soft life. <laughs> me there immediately, okay? Because <laughs> look, I've been working since I was 15 years old. And when I tell you, you know how we are, yeah. we come yeah. from, we don't do no light labor, okay? No. <laughs> when we go at something, I mean, we go at it, we go at it hard, <laughs> we work sun up, sun down, we are fully invested. Can't nobody outwork us country girls, nobody. All right. Girl, let me tell you, I went to Walmart the other day and was getting some corn. Mm -hmm. I never felt more at home than standing in Walmart shucking some corn. <laughs> <laughs> Did it feel good, girl? It felt 
felt good to me. I was like, let me. I was getting more corn than I needed. I let me go on and shoot some good. more corn. Girl, let me get this silk off this girl. Corn. I'm pulling the silk so off good. the corn and look. So and my kids don't know nothing about this child. I'm breaking off the little uh, what you got like the little uh, the stalk. I'm breaking yeah. it off, girl. I didn't have myself a good old time. I listen, I know, and that's the thing. Me, that's where we come from. So, what you're talking about. Very symbolic, right? Wherever we're standing, we're working. Ooh. Wherever we're standing, we're working. Ooh. And it's it's because of how we are built. It's, it's because of how we think. It's because of what's in our DNA, what's been passed down. Your grandmas, your great aunts, my grandmas, my great, our mamas, right? Mm-hmm. And we may we may do it in a different space. We may have all these degrees and be sitting in offices, but girl, I, I <laughs> our sleeves are rolled up <laughs> because that's what's in us, right? <laughs> and so now, girl, look, I'm like a young folk. I'm like, look, take me to this soft life y'all talking about. <laughs> Get me there immediately. <laughs> Listen, yeah. I tell you another time. I said, child, I gotta roll with Gen Z. Because Gen Z is on with something. They own it. They own it. And that's what I want. That's the bottom line. And that's what I want to pass down to my daughter. I want my daughter to know that it is okay to sit down somewhere, that she is whole even when she is still. Girl, that is so good. Do you hear me? Do you hear how good? Let me tell you something. So, in, in me slowing down when I can take the time to really like, so my focus right now is just being present. You know yeah. me? Like, let me, let me be present and really, cause you know, time is flying. When you look at Noah's going to be graduating, Bro. Jordan's going to be graduating and like time is rolling. What are we even going to do? But see, okay. So look, see, that's the point too. Okay. So many points I want to make in that, but in that, I'm, I'm trying to be present and I have tried to, you know, be an example versus just talk about it. So even though within myself, I'm like struggling a little bit because like you said, I have attached, but I, tr- if y'all have listened to the podcast, I've been very transparent about, you know, now you, you don't ever know all the things and reasons God does is doing things, no, really. but I do believe that part of him, you know, pulling me away from the grind was like, for me to be mindful about what I'm attaching my value to because you will attach your value to like, like I'm a giver. I'm an encourager, right? Yes, you are. What? Thank you. <laughs> but what I've realized though, Lee, um, I feel like I don't have value if I'm not doing that. Yeah. If I'm not pushing somebody, if I'm not cheering for somebody, if I'm not encouraged, I, I God wants me to see the value in just like being his child and being able to just like, like I'm good if I'm not encouraging. Yep. You know, and and so right. like attaching it. So the other day we went to a, um, a, a like a carnival night at the twin school, and I sat down at this picnic table with this lady, and I was like, "Girl, anybody sitting right here?" She was like, "No." So I sat there with her, and child, when I tell you we just had friendship chemistry, uh-huh. like it was just a connection. And child, I felt now. Listen, later, y'all, I was like, "Look at the Lord sending this to me," because that's where I was getting it from. When I tell you, we sat at that table and talked like we had grown up together. It wasn't that little awkward, small talk. Yeah. It was like we, and I'm talking about laughing. I mean, cracking up. We are people watching. People are coming over to sit and ask, you know, like, can we sit right here? We like, yeah. I mean, we had us a good old time. Girl, what is he? Girl, what? She? I mean, <laughs> we had. I mean, we have laughed until we have cried over at this table. <laughs> and, and when child, I thought a llama was a giraffe. Child, and we had a lot going on. We sat over there and laughed. And when I left, my soul felt so refreshed. Yes. And what I realized is it was because. She didn't know anything about me in the sense of like what I do. You know what I mean? Like, and this is no shade to people who I interact with that I know from what I do. But a lot of times my connections with people now is from me teaching or yeah. painting. You know, I, they see me in that capacity. Girl, you know, looking and, for my fit. Girl, they're looking at you for their fit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we all are. yeah. So, so, but she, she didn't know anything about me. And so. I wasn't in that space. And what I realized that was why it was so refreshing is that I have put that on myself to like show up in that way. 
mm-hmm. because that's where I think my value is mm-hmm. not mm-hmm. in just being a funny friend who can sit down and laugh which is why when we get together we have such a good time i mean when i say we laugh till we cry we, we laugh we, we laugh until we, we look cry. we text till we cry we don't I mean, even have to see each other <laughs> yeah i mean this is one of the best friendships where we like child lord listen if something go down get my phone throw it away <laughs> Find the phone immediately. Throw the phone away. That is your first priority. Exactly. Get the phone. We toss the phone. Toss the phone, girl. <laughs> like I need a code that I can put in from afar to detonate. Somebody get ready to touch that thing, bro. Boom. No, we would not touch this phone. <laughs> no, delete the thread. Delete, delete. Oh. The mission. Oh, but, you know, in just learning, but that goes to say, even in friendships, Lee, there is that need or me feeling like I got to quote unquote show up expectation. Yes. That's what that was. See, now that's why you felt better when you got up and left that lady because you were able to show up authentically how you were right then be exactly who you were, how you were feeling in that moment in that space, share a few very lighthearted, authentic laughs with this stranger lady Mm -hmm. and not, have to be on no expectation from another person for you to be something, do something, give something, right? Right. And the freedom in that is what made you feel so much relief, I believe. Oh, abs- that's exactly what it was. Yeah. And that's when I realized, like, Jamaica, you have to take ownership for it because that's how you show up because you feel like that is the thing that people need from you mm-hmm. you mean and so it's like as women that's kind of the space that we put ourselves in let me show up the way you yes need me to show up and it doesn't mean that we don't have times when we do need to show up for each other so I'm not Absolutely. saying that but like feeling like that is your soul thing all the time not even giving yourself the grace to just have a light-hearted yes. laugh that's right just a light hearted laugh. Like stuff like that is so important. So with Jordan, we were talking about, uh, you know, volleyball and stuff when we got on and I will say this, I think because of the relationship that we have in Jordan's personality, Jordan's absolutely going to live soft life. <laughs> she is Gen Z through and through, honey. I'm glad. So if y'all follow me on Instagram or if we, you know, know each other, you know, like Jordan plays competitive volleyball on a, on a high level and we do a lot of traveling. Um, but recently her knees had just been bothering her really bad. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, we, you know, the even though we went to the doctor, the doctor's like, listen, she can take off. But the thing is, if she doesn't get like extensive rest, it's never going to completely get better like just a couple weeks is not enough like Mm -hmm. she's rest Mm -hmm. and this last tournament that we played in honestly the best not just the best I've ever seen her play but the best a team has ever played they went undefeated they did not lose not one set like Mm -hmm. not once so they literally won the whole thing went to the gold bracket championship won the whole thing right wow yeah and you and so when you feel that you feel like, well, I gotta keep going. Yeah. But the thing that we had to talk to Jordan, I was like, but you don't. You know, like I, I get where you are, and I get you know, especially with athletics, it's like you finish it out. But it's okay to put your needs and your priorities first. Jordan, That's your right. needs are bothering you horribly. That's right. And it's okay for you to be like, as much as I want to be there for everybody. And I know we still have, you know, two tournaments left. My body just can't take it. Like, yeah. I, I can sacrifice. But I'm like, Jordan, at this point, you're playing off of adrenaline and ibuprofen. You know what I mean? And like, that's not what you need to be doing. And so teaching her to know her own boundaries. And and a lot of times we think boundaries are for other people. The yeah. boundaries are for you. Show sure are, honey. The boundaries are for you. So you there's no guarantee when you put a boundary out there that somebody else is going to respect it. And But they're surely not going to respect it if you don't respect it. If you Come put on. the boundary out there and you don't respect it, well, what gives anybody else? Come on, me. You know, to want to do it. So, like, if I say, if I'm at work, hey, listen, I don't I don't answer work calls on the weekend. But when you call me on the weekend, I pick up. Well, 
I do answer work calls on the weekend. Mm-hmm. I, I have, you know, violated the boundary, which then gives other people permission to do the same thing. That's so if right. I say I don't answer work calls on the weekend, ring, 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 ring. Mm-hmm. This is my face. Mm-hmm. And me watching this phone go to voicemail. Mm-hmm. I'm not picking up. I see you Monday. Yeah. I- <laughs> <laughs> I will see you on Monday. <laughs> I see you Monday, bro. I see. I see you on Monday. And so, yeah. just showing her, you know. And so, when when she we talked about it, um, you know, she cried, and she was like, you know, I just feel like I'm letting my teen up, man. Your worth is not in sacrificing your body. That's right. To get something to hang around your neck. I mm-hmm. mean. The, the the medals and the trophies and all this stuff is good and I get the memories but um I don't want you 25 you know can't bend down to pick something up off the floor that's right like, we have to take care of you and I you know that was just a great opportunity for me to talk to her about that and be like you got to know when enough is enough and so even though I've struggled you know within myself to sit still one of the things that I have shared with her is like I feel so much better Honestly, like physically, now that I'm not in the grind, grind all the time. So I'm not going to sit here and sell y'all no story of like, oh, it's all what I, I still struggle yeah, within I struggle. myself. Yeah, I'm struggling right now. Yeah, I, I, well, like, honest, I, I think it's a I think it's a, a lifelong struggle. When you've got something in your DNA, you might be fighting that current. Yeah. But but the self-awareness is what's key. Mm-hmm. It's gonna keep. It's gonna keep you in the fight. It's gonna keep you cognizant that okay, this this here is a problem. Mm-hmm. And if I don't keep my finger on the pulse of it, things can get carried away. And what I mean, I think this example with Jordan is is a great one. Like we appreciate her integrity, right? Mm-hmm. And her wanting to um, do what it takes to keep going for other people. But see, that's the thing that comes natural to us as mm-hmm. women. That's the thing that that's the current that we had to fight. That's that is the 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 thing that we had to find the sweet spot about. When is it the time to show up? When are the absolute times that I need to be present? And when are the times that I need to fall back for myself? That's not, that is not an easy balance. It's not it's not easy because now me to, again now we're women, but we're also we're country women. You know. <laughs> Stuff goes down in the country. <laughs> you know that the women gather. Yes, right? we do. You know that the women are cooking. The yes. women will come to your house to clean. Yes. The, the women are doing all the things. The women don't give up. We, we don't disappear. We don't fall back. And so it's that balance of knowing when somebody needs you and when you need to be there, when it's your time to be there. And when it's your time to be there for you. That's not easy for us. Lee. It ain't easy, girl. I'm, I struggle with it all the time. I don't know what I'm going to tell true. I, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what, I don't, it's just, it's it's not easy. But it, ha, it has to be, we have to resolve to come to that space of understanding for our mental health, honey. Yes. For, for her knees, for, yes. for, my, for your heart. For yes. your mind, for your spirit. Yes. You better you better resolve that. Look, it may not, not be easy to balance that thing or get to that space, but you, you better get there. You better be trying because Ooh. your mind is at hand. And you know what, Lee? Like, that's the, the best way I can describe it. Finding the balance of knowing when, like, I need to show up for this. Mm-hmm. And then knowing when you need to sit back for mm-hmm. yourself. Yep. You know, it's not just a cliche that you can't pour from an, an empty cup. You literally can't do it. Real. You can't do it. I, I can't yeah, give real. to you. I don't have the capacity for all the things. Yeah. When I'm not taking time to recharge. Yeah, absolutely. You have to take the time to recharge. What I will say, though, Lee, even though it is a slight struggle, I will say, as I'm sitting here having this conversation, I'm so much better than I was mm-hmm. you know? and so there's been improvement and so what I'm realizing is the more I do it the easier it does become and I, I didn't say it happens immediately but the more I do that the more like part of my natural rhythm you know it happens and so whether it's coming to me naturally or not 
my kids are still seeing me do it. Absolutely. And I don't know that they know whether it's natural or not, but that's they, my point. They see you do it. Oh. And that's what's important. That's what they're gonna emulate. That that doing it, you they seeing you do it is what's gonna make it more natural for them. That part, Lee. And so look, I just had that whole thing while I was sitting here. I'm like, whether because I'm not sitting there talking to them, telling them that whoa, this is a struggle for me to sit still. They just see it. Yeah. You know, they so hopefully because that's what they see, that is what they emulate. You yeah. know, they see me taking the time to slow down. And I will say this when you are so tired and, and you are pushing yourself to the brink in all the different ways, even though I think I'm doing something when I'm showing up for my kids, I'm really not showing up the way I need to. You're, you're so, exhausted. Yeah. Cause you're tired. And so yeah. what I realize is now I can keep up with the carnival night and I know what time it is and I knew what time to get there early. And girl, I pre-ordered the tickets. They had the bands before we got oh, there. Go ahead. Go ahead come on. Girl. Come on. Go okay, ahead. Me. Go ahead. Yes. And so to be able to know when Jordan will have tournaments and when do we need to leave, you know, and being able to keep up with those things, like how I show up for them is I'm just way more present yeah. and really involved, you know, in a good way. Um, but having said that, my next step is being mindful to also find the things that I enjoy. Because right now, Lee, I don't, I don't have, what you do? I work out. You know, <laughs> like, and, and, and they're not that working out is not good. It's great. Yeah, of course. But if, if I have a hobby, like, I'm like, I don't do, I don't, mm -hmm. you know. And so I, um, Stephen Curry's mom, you know, she had a book and she was sharing that once the youngest left the house, she ended up getting diagnosed with depression oh, because okay. she was like, I, she had poured so much into the family. That was all she did that when everybody left, she didn't know who she was. That's the thing, girl. That's the thing. I'm conscious of that too, Mick, because as Noah is inching towards the edge of the nest, right? He's going to graduate next year, child. That thing is something. But, um, and then I still have justice and I still have truth. The way my heart feels about that oldest one getting ready to leave here. Ooh. Baby, it is a signal to me that I better be getting myself together. Girl. It's a signal to me that I better be figured, figuring out who in the world I am and what in the world I'm doing and what I'm going to be and do. And I better be doing it now. Yes. I better not be figuring that out then. Yes. I better be in a, a flow of what makes me happy and what oh. makes me feel fulfilled. And what fills my cup yes. and, and what, what what drives me as a human being yes. um, outside of, because I have, I've been consumed by these kids and am consumed yes. by these kids. And work. And baby, and work, right? All the things. But I'm very con conscious of exactly what she talked about in that book, because I feel it as Noah's getting older, as he's getting to the edge. So- She's hundred percent right, and I don't want that to be my story. Girl. I don't. I don't want to stop. And on his graduation, or actually True's graduation day, she goes off, and in, in eight years, not know who I am, Ooh. or have any purpose for myself. Girl, I and, don't and, that. and you know what that is. I'm in that same space with you, and it's a and it's a it's a crazy space to be in because. You know, when they're younger and they're babies, like you just trying to survive. You know, yeah. let me <laughs> let me do what I can yeah. to get through each day. But as they get older and they get this independence, and now you're just more of like I'm chaperoning in a sense. You know, I'm a guy. You know, you you've poured into them, and so now you're there to kind of like monitor the parameters, mm -hmm. but they can do so much on their own and now they have friends and they're involved in things and they have their own interests. And so now as the talks have fully gone to colleges, you know, universities and, you know, what, what she knows what she wants to major in. And so, you know, as we're talking about this stuff, this is very real to me. And, you know, I, I cannot tell you the number of times I have cried tears. I mean, oh, like, yeah. I, Oh, I'm like, I cry now, child. I cry. Oh. Listen, I cry right down the road, honey. Just look, just think about it. Girl, the thought <laughs> of it. The thought of it. I'm like, oh my gosh, because you know, there's this thing in your mind where you're like, 
and to, you're the same as us it's five of us mm-hmm. you know and and pretty soon that dynamic shifts it does and even though you know you know she'll be coming back from college still like they're adults now and then eventually there probably will be a someone to say hey i'm doing this intern or hey i'm i decided i got a job and i want to stay and so you're just looking at this dynamic that you have right now where it's been five of you for so long yeah and even though we both of us because we our timeline is right there with each other yes, it is. even though there'll still be two in the house it's still a shift in the dynamic it is you know and so now who am i jo- carlos said something the other day jordan came in and she was joking about something and carlos um grabbed me he said don't let her pit us against each other because when they leave the house we just gonna have each other and i was like <laughs> <"Yeah."> <laughs> <laughs> she's like don't let her pit us don't let her pit us against each other because they're gonna leave the house and it's gonna be me and you here and like it's true though yeah, the girl is it's gospel that's it truth. is true and it's so true. you know while it is important for the development and evolution of our children to show up and then this also goes to those who are nurturers and caregivers so you might not necessarily be uh, have children that you're raising but you are a caregiver you're a nurturer it's so important to also nurture yourself very, like, very much so. it has to be something else for you to lean in what are your interests what are your hobbies what like do you say what are the things that make you come alive so that when those shifts happen you're not standing looking trying to figure out what in the world is going on and who in the world are you like right. like the, the podcast is called looking for my fit but i don't i don't want to have to look for my fit <laughs> you know, I'm looking for it now so I can find it. Yeah. I don't want to have to do that once they've, you know, they're off and living their own lives and starting their own families if that's what they want to do. We also need to pour into ourselves. We really do. And, you know, I think what you're talking about is you're saying that I'm thinking the anticipation of change, you know, yeah. a, a change of life. It yeah. just it is just not easy in concept as we as we as our mind's eye looks at it in the future. Mm-hmm. It is not easy in concept. And we know when the day comes, we know that change is not all, really ever going to be altogether comfortable. It's going to be hard. Right. There are going to be yeah. some tears shed. But I don't want to be standing there crying because I don't know who I am. Woo. I want to be standing there crying because I've, you know, done my very best to usher this amazing human being to this part of life and to have hopefully given that person the tools as it is within my power, at least to be the best they can be out here in this big world. But I don't want to be crying because I don't know who I am, Mm. where I'm going, what I'm going to do with myself. And I don't know, you know, I'm not there yet. I don't know if those feelings are inevitable or not. All I know is that, you know, we better be living while we're raising these kids because, oh. honey, let me tell you something. It ain't no joke. What Carlos said. Yeah. It's it's the cycle of life. Our mamas had to let us go. Yeah. Our daddies had to let us bounce off the edge of the nest. Yeah. So every everybody finds themselves there. Yeah. And what I don't want to be is there. And not growing there with yes. nowhere to go there and completely lost. I, there's going to be a transition that my heart's going to hurt you. I'm a heart hurt right now. At the <laughs> yeah. But, but I want to know who I am in that space. I want to still feel like I got some value to add to this world yeah. and, and to myself and that I'm yeah. whole. I want to yes. feel, I want to be whole. Yes. And you, you know, and then I'm because everything that you said brings us right back to the book. And this part does too, for all of the things that my, my mother did for me. Yeah. And it's a lot. So like, um, and both of my parents, you know, I love them. I love them to life. Um, my mom, you know, she did a lot for all of us. And even in all the things that she did, you know, the things that stand, the, the, the memories that make me most excited when I look back. What? Is watching her do things that she loved. So my mom's like huge into medical things, which is why she's so excited. Jordan wants to be a nurse. Jordan wants to be a travel nurse. You know, that's oh, fun. yeah. Okay. Yeah, Jordan loves medical things. She's taking these classes now. She loves them. And my mom was into it. 
And so I remember that, you know, uh-huh. back in the day, every, you had Burlington Industries. We like our hometown was like the hub for industrial plants. Yes. That's you right. name them, that's, they were there. That's right. And when they started, I remember when they started laying off, um, my mom was still doing something like medically. Um, and they offered her a different position. And she said, no, I think I'm going to go back to school. And I remember being like, that's what I'm talking about, woman. I remember, that. I remember that. I remember thinking your mama was so brave. Yes. I love that. And she loved it so much. And so seeing her in her element and how excited she would be to come back and tell us about class. But also, she then ended up being an EMT. And so she, yeah, yeah, was working on, on the um, rescue squad, the ambulance. What? Yes, girl. <laughs> yes. And so, you know, sometimes we put this guilt on ourselves, right? about having to be there for your kids all the time yeah. well when my mother so like my dad would be working third shift and then sometimes the shift that she would work as an EMT would be overnight but guess what I mean now granted you know we had the grandparents so life was a little different then but I never thought like oh my mom's not here at night I was so excited I was like my mom works for the ambulance you know like that's what I was excited yes. about she would what come back and tell us about the call- yes and she would come back and she would tell us about the calls that she went on and then sometimes we would be home and she would keep the scanner on and they would come on and it might be like a big accident and they, they're saying like hey we need all hands on deck blah 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 girl she would take yes. us and put us in that car and we would ride to wherever it was and she would get out and she'd be like do not get out this car we'd be like okay and then we get to sit there and watch her in her element like those are like some of my favorite yeah. memories yeah. Watching my mom do the thing that like brought her alive. Watching her in her full strength. Watching, yes, yes, yes. Like yes. those are the things, and so you know, I think that's an important thing for all of us to keep in mind. I think sometimes we think that showing up and doing all the things for the kids with the kids is like the best thing that you can do. But sometimes the best thing you can do is allow them to see you living life in the things that you love and the things that bring that light to your eye like you know really operating your purpose and in your call and like not to the point that you've worn yourself down but like where they can see you flourishing it's nothing but the truth you know that thing reminds me of something Noah said to me when he was probably nine or ten years old I was standing in the kitchen cooking one day and he came over to me and it was nothing but the voice of God he looked up at me he said mama don't be the little pistachio Burst it open and be the tree. Oh, you know, like these girls, God be using these kids. But, you know, and, and what he was trying to tell me, and, he, and just like true, he bounced on off, went on somewhere in my <laughs> business. You know, God had used him and he was done. But, you know, these kids are cognizant of when we are in our full strength. Yes. They, they know when we are happy. Yes. They, they know when we are thriving. They know when yes. we are fulfilled. They yes. can see it just like you saw Mama Gail, right? Yes. In her element. They can they know it when they see it. Yes. Right? Yes. And, and they are so inspired. Yes. And they are so empowered when they see us that way, just like you are or were when you saw Mama Gail doing that. And I remember, girl, I remember when Mama Gail was laid off and I remember when she went back to school and I remember being inspired by a few things. I remember being inspired by the fact that she was in the middle of her life, you know, raising us yep. and went back to school. Yes. That was first because you know that was unheard of girl. Yep. Came from. It was. <laughs> Not unheard of. And you know what the crazy thing was? Oh no, go ahead and I'll tell you that. Keep going. Uh-huh. And then the other thing I was really inspired by was the way I saw your father support. Yes. Right? Yes. Like I saw your dad, I saw it become very much a family effort. Yes. This is what she was going to do. And this is what the family was going to do to line up financially, physically, emotionally, all of the things to be what it, what it was she needed yes. so that she could get that done, so that she could get that accomplished. And I just always admired your family for that. You know what? I, and even though like I didn't have anything to give monetarily, I I'm not afraid of needles to this day because I got we we got our fingers stuck so much while she was practicing <laughs> little things like bring your hand here, way. okay? <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> bring your finger here, okay? Practicing what is my glue close level? Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> so, <laughs> but God, you know, and 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 
to bring it on home, sometimes you just need to make that step. This is a side part. Do you know my mom went back to school and I was going to say didn't pay a dime, but I think she paid like a dime. I think one time something came up and she owed like 10 cents for something. Every bit of her schooling when she went back to get that degree got paid for. My mom paid literally, I think, like a dime. Uh, and so it was, was God. Me- yeah, that was meant to be. God yeah. made the way. But that goes back to uh, being true to yourself, you know, and knowing what it is that you need to do for yourself. That's right. And so I think if we take, you know, everything from this entire conversation, the primary thing is the title of the book. It is. Be true Girl. to you. Be true to you. Be true to you. It's real. It's real. And you know what? You know, as you're saying that, man, it takes courage. It takes courage. What you're describing your mama did. Mm-hmm. You know, because the hustle uh, would be to go find another job, make make it happen yep. so that there's no deficit in the household so that, you know, I'm always able to do what I've always done. Mm-hmm. Um, the courage is to say, I want more. Mm-hmm. I need this for me. Yep. I, yes, I've got kids in school. Yes, so they're going to college. Yes, the husband goes to work. And yes, you know, we're used to being a, a two income family, but I need this for me. That takes a whole lot of courage. That takes a whole lot of courage, Lee. And and they did it. And I, I'll tell you what, if if there was a deficit in the household, we uh, me, you know, me and Jay didn't feel it. Mm-hmm. You know, so that. yeah. So and we didn't you know, see it, girl, because y'all were still dressed. <laughs> <laughs> there was one. I don't know nothing about it. You know, Good tell. You know, Good being, tell. Sometimes you take that step to be true to you. You know, God has a way of lining things up. And so right. just remembering to show up as your authentic self and being mindful about what you are attaching your value to. That's right. So, Lee, let me say this. Everybody needs to have this book in their possession. Thank you know. You. Everyone needs to have this book as a reminder of the importance of how you show up for yourself. So, you know, you you can be in all di- different phases of life. Um, you could have kids, you small, t- tiny kids who are in the house, or older kids, or maybe you're an empty nester, or you know, you are a caregiver or you're a woman who has really been grinding in the workforce and you, you know, you've been pushing it to the edge and working to maintain it all um, mm-hmm. and put on good face and have pretty pictures and reels on Instagram. Uh, this book is for you. It is for you. This book is for you. So Lily, let, let's, the book dropped on. So let's talk about this. You did the launch on May the 6th. Uh huh. Um, and all the pictures and the videos from it were amazing. Girl, you had such a great turnout. Sold out of the books that you had. Sure did, honey. Sold sure out. Did. So I am sold out. Hey, 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 <laughs> hey. <laughs> hey, we go. Okay. Yes, but you sold out of the books. Um, yeah. and it just looked beautiful. And I loved, you know, getting to look back through the videos and all of the pictures. Uh, but I don't want the people to get nervous because the books are still available. Oh yeah, girl. I, yeah, we were shipping our books today. Absolutely. Yeah, we they, they're steady coming in. We absolutely sold out that day. The good news is I have an amazing printer who turn around pretty fast. So we <laughs> sent, we've sent out hundreds more copies just this week. That is so amazing, Lee. I'm so proud of you. Thank you so um, much. And I know, you know, after after all that we talked about, and you're like, girl, I'm still struggling. I feel like your children got to watch you because I've watched how you support them. Like you turned when she talked at the beginning about true eating beauty, it's not just her and her daughter. She's pulled in everybody, the nieces, the nephews, the brothers, everybody Mm -hmm. has a position and a title and responsibility. When Mm -hmm. I came to see you at the busy bean in South Boston, shout out to the busy bean in South Boston, (laughs) Virginia. little plug for them. I love that shop. Um, Honey, you had trained the children up. They came up. I mean, any question I had that I mean, that, listen, this is what I need y'all to understand. So it's her three children plus C's two children, and then you had some associates with you <laughs> and, <laughs> and the, honey, brand, the brand ambassadors. Child, the brand ambassadors knew <laughs> that stuff. They were like, "Oh, well, this is our best selling product." I said, "Excuse me, ma'am." I mean, broke that thing down. I was thoroughly impressed. Thank so you. you're showing them how to do that for them, but I'm excited that after watching you do that for them. Mm-hmm. That they need now get to see you 
showing up for yourself and the fact that you and True got to do it as a collaboration is beautiful. And I'm so proud of you. Thank you, Meg. Thank you. And I want everyone to go get this book. Um, I'm going to have a copy. I'm going to have multiple copies. But if you look in here, the illustrations are gorgeous. When I tell you the illustrations are gorgeous, everything just comes together so seamlessly. And it's not a book that you'll read one time. I think it's a book you mean multiple times uh, for yourself or at nighttime. I can see, you know, children wanting to hear it over and over again. Um, it is not a super long read. It is the perfect length, mm-hmm. the perfect length. When you need that reminder, you jump back in and, and you, you remind yourself it's time for me to be true to me. So Lee, I have it up here on the screen where they can purchase the book. That's they can right. get it at trueedenbeauty.com. They can. And the thing about that is um, when you go to trueedenbeauty.com, uh, we're going to send you a hard cover. That is going to be personally signed by both me and True with a um, personal message. Um, it is also available in paperback on Amazon. Oh, um, yes. Yeah. Yep. So, but obviously that won't come to us first, so we won't be able to sign it for you. But it's certainly available uh, on paperback and paperback on Amazon. Eventually, we're going to be um, pretty soon here. We'll announce um, the fact that we'll probably be in Barnes and Noble in, in the next few weeks. Come on. Yeah, and looking to do a little, little bit of a Barnes and Nobles tour. So we'll be in um, in stores and retail, the independent stores. We and we'll be announcing that as it comes up and it comes available, and God makes that way. But right now, True Eden Beauty for the hardcover, personal signature, and um, paperback. If you prefer that, we you can get that on Amazon. Well, Lee, well, listen, and if y'all want to follow along on Instagram, you want to connect. Um, if you're looking here on the screen, I have it up here. But if you're listening, uh, it's Lily Jones Sneed. So it's L E L E Jones Sneed. Sneed is S N E E D. So Lily Jones Sneed, or or and not or. You can follow her at Lily Jones Sneed and and at True Eden Beauty. And so Eden is E D E N, and True is spelled just like you would normally spell the word True. T R U E. So True Eden Beauty and Lily Jones Sneed. And if you want the hard copy and you want it personally signed you can go to trueedenbeauty.com but if you're like look i can't wait i'm ready to get it now you hop on over to amazon you can get the paperback copy um but that hard the, i get it whichever way moves you but that hard uh cover so gorgeous i the the pages are beautiful the illustrations Thank are amazing Thank you. um and so you know if you can i would say hop on and get that hard cover because that's i feel like it's timeless and i feel like it's something that you can pass down. So maybe I have it in the house. It's like, girl, I'm sending it off to Jordan to college. Take this on and remember. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it is. I think so. I thank God for that. I think it is timeless. I yes. think she will, she'll always be able to read this. She'll read it with by herself. She'll read it with her, her kids in the future. If she so chooses to have them. Yeah. Um, and it'll always be an encouragement. I hope. Yes, it will be. Well, Lee, I love you to life. I love you, Meek. I love you. I'm proud of you. Meek, I'm proud of you. (laughs) I received that. Thank you. And I'm proud of you. I am proud of you. I'm proud of what you're doing for women out here. I'm proud of what you're doing for yourself, for your family. I'll be, girl, listen, I'm looking for my fit too. (laughs) Look, I thank God for the platform you created for us all to find it. Oh, well, that means a lot to me, Lee. You know, I love you and I appreciate it. Lee is the straight shooter of the um, three of us. (laughs) (laughs) If you need to bleed real quick. (laughs) If you just want to want to see your blood trickle a little bit, you just holler at Lee. She'll slice you up real quick. She going to slice you up and then she going to bandage you up. She going to slice you and then she going to... Package it. <laughs> like, that is a girl. Look, we just gotta tell each other the truth. Ain't in line, honey. Ain't nobody <laughs> on the line about stuff. Yeah. So if you need the truth, you need it quickly. <laughs> you go to Lee, you go to Lee, but just know she gonna come with the first aid kit. She, she, gonna, she gonna do it without you realizing it. Uh, but then she gonna pat you on back up in love, and you gonna That's heal right. better than you ever have. Because um, I love you, girl. I love <laughs> but you. I love you for that. And seriously, I'm just so proud of you. Thank you, me. Yeah. So keep showing up and showing out and be true to you so y'all seriously go out and grab a copy of this book and uh let me know what you think of it look at that right there if you're looking on youtube gorgeous absolutely gorgeous um 
But y'all grab a copy. Let me know what you think once you get it. And look, when you get it, tag her on Instagram. Please um, do. Yeah, so that you she knows that you got the book and let her know what you think about it. But again, Lee, thank you. I've enjoyed this thank conversation you. so Lee, much. I have listen, I've had a blast. Thank you so much. You are so welcome. All right, y'all. Go get the book and then hop on over. Go ahead and order the book. Then hop on over to Instagram. Follow Lily Jones Sneed or uh, no, follow Lily Jones Sneed and True Eden Beauty. And take away from this conversation that, you know, in all things, like be true to yourself. You know, right. give yourself the gift of being true to yourself. Okay. All right, y'all. It has been amazing. And I will catch you all on the next episode. Bye. Listen, I can't have you all missing out on episodes. I appreciate you all being here and I want you to stay here. So before you leave, go ahead, click that subscribe button so you'll be the first to know when the next episode drops. I'll see y'all then. Looking for my fit is what I do. Looking for my fit, looking for my fit, yeah.